Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bakai. It's Mori Midday, Yahoo and Yashrael. Want to welcome you to the first Shabbat of the year. So we wanted to, even though this is not a normal teaching day, I just wanted to come on and make sure everybody um, can get to the stream because we had to, we started a new um service 2022 is what it's called so want to make sure everything is functioning and that the stream is up and running that way next week we won't have any difficulties praise y'all So uh, we we just uh, thankful to have you in the stream, and if you if you're coming on, if if you could just you know say shalom or shabbat shalom, that way I can see who's on. So I'm actually looking at the uh, the live chat. We have Ka Yahoo. We have uh, Yahoo Shon Daoud. We have Lola 1912. We have Al, Naraya, Moray Kanan. So people are jumping on. And I put the link in the encouragement stream. I also put the link in. I also put the link, it's on, the new link is on the website. <clears throat> so we want to make sure that the, the stream and everybody's finding the link. So as you might have guessed, uh, this year, the theme or the focus is going to be around the feast days. That's going to be the focus. That's the direction that the Father is sending sending me in. We've um, started covering this back during the rainy season. Now look at it. We're already bam. Pesach is right around the corner. So to grasp and to grow we have to target certain areas. And that's what we're doing this year. We're going to target to make sure that the feast days are what they're designed to be. And most importantly, that we're, and you'll see this next week, we're going to, when we pick up our lesson next week and we start talking about the grain you know, the all the feasts that involve grains. You're going to start to see that, you know, there are some things we have to improve, we have to get better at. And there might be some things we have to eliminate from how we're approaching his, his days because they're not our feast days, they're his feast days. So we we want to improve our understanding. We want to improve how we memorialize his feast days with the Ruach or the spirit of that feast day. So, and how it was designed, you know, even though we might not mimic it exactly, we want to carry the spirit of that feast day. And we'll, we'll be talking about Pesach specifically next week and all the different grain offerings and how we get prepared. We, we can grow a harvest, but we have to make sure that harvest is ready to be presented because remember the first thing of the harvest is went to him. So we have to make sure that 
the stages of getting it to him, we've hit the proper We've, we've done the proper things to make sure the harvest is acceptable. So I trust everyone can hear me fine. I trust that you've had a great Shabbat. And I don't know if you uh, were watching, but I was, you know, just going out monitoring through the day the equinox and taking pictures and sure enough you you just see it there's an alignment that cur occurs when the equinox hit there's an alignment that occurs up in the heavens that lets us know that this is where the cycle starts for the calendar for the feast days the feast day cycles and it also confirms the fourth day of creation that you'll see written in Genesis of Bereshit, starting at verse 14, where he gave the assignment and things lined up then. They're still lining up today. Powerful witness, powerful witness, powerful witness. Now, I can tell you that as we go through and we start discussing some of the protocols for the feast days, some people will gravitate some people want but remember you have to take ownership of your walk you have to take ownership of you getting closer I can only relay what the father gives me and the understanding that he wants me to bring to you because oftentimes what happened, we, sit, we spend so much time on the knowledge portion, trying to make sure the knowledge lines up and, you know, that we forget that there's a part that we have to do, that we have to, you know, I can read for a thousand years, you know, um, how to treat my neighbor. You know, all the stuff surrounding that. I can rehearse it back to you in the drop of a dime. But where the real test comes is when I have to interact with those that are my neighbor. You know, it's one thing to quote it. It's another thing to actually put it into practice. And this is... This will be one of the areas we'll be touching on with the feast days, putting stuff into practice, making sure your attitude, your heart, your, that means your mind, all of these things are in the right place that we're not just going through the motions of the feast day, but the feast day and the Ruach or the spirit of the feast day is what's dri the driving force behind our celebration and that we're striving to make it joyous, to make it his feast day. And instead of, you know, bending it, well, I think it should be like this. I, well, let's see what, how he laid it out and what best aligns with memorializing it. So for some, it will be a, a tough venture. Um, often when we come from various backgrounds and we are accustomed to certain ways, we have a tendency to take our traditions that we learned in other places and overlay them on his feast day. Okay? So... Just an example, you know, uh, I remember when we were in the church and we would have functions. One of the central points would become decorations, you know, and, and how we dress things up. But for us, you should be the decoration. 
You should be the one from the inside out that's the offering that's being presented. You should represent your best during that day. Because the bottom line is your actions have to be acceptable. Notice in the story when we talk about Cain and Abel, what was the underlying reason? They brought they both brought offerings, but there was something in the background that made one of their offerings acceptable and the other unacceptable. So we have to strive not just to, you know, oh well. I, I did what I thought I was supposed to do. We have to make sure that we're giving him our best. And I'll come back to it. Our best attitude. Our best at everything. You know, and one thing about attitudes and how people present themselves How you prepared leading up to that feast day will determine the outcome of the feast day for you. So in other words, you can't cover up stuff that has been plaguing you. You've got to deal with it. Okay, you can't mask it over and bury it for the feast day. It needs to be addressed before the feast day because you don't know what could happen that could cause that thing to rise up on his day. So that's why you make sure things are taken care of, that all your quote unquote sheep are in a row. (laughs) Some people would say ducks, but we want to make sure that our sheep are in a row that we are where we need to be. So we we've got you've got a little over a week to go. So that's adequate time to start to check. You should have been checking a long time when I started when we first started on these lessons. You know The people that were serious jumped on it. They caught it. But sometimes people have this wait to the last minute spirit. And you shouldn't be at the at the door and the feast get ready to come in. And you know that you had a problem that you need to take care of with someone. And you wait to the last minute to try to take care of it. Before the feasts come in, what did the, what does that tell you about you as a person? It really sheds a light, even though you're trying to take care of it. It really shares a light that his commandments and what he's told us to do in his word is not priority to you until something significant comes around. But see, something significant shouldn't have to come around. His word should be priority at all times. What did what did the psalmist say? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So I don't have to, you know, oh well, it's atonement. So I better get this right. But you knew back at before Passover that it needs to be dealt with. But you wait until atonement in the fall. So that tells me that you don't have the father's word as a priority. Because if his word is priority, you don't push off what he's commanded you to do. You take care of it. And you take care of it quickly. 
So these feast days, <clears throat> before they even knock on our door, we want to make sure that we're walking this journey out with his purpose. Because look, look what I you see, you've been seeing these on all the slides. We're walking it out with his purpose and his order. That's the priority. That's what we're focusing on. So I said it wasn't going to be a lesson, but I, I get to talking and hey, what can I say? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So if you have questions um, and or you just, you know, want to reach out to me, of course, you can reach me at info at mylivingbranch.org. I've had um, over the coming over the last, I say, last two, three months, a lot of people have been reaching out. So, you know, um, and my job is not always to answer your questions. But sometimes I'll, before I answer it, I'll make you do some groundwork. Because you'll get more value out of putting some work into it. Sometimes when you just give people knowledge, they don't value that knowledge like they value what they had to, the knowledge that they had to study for. And unfortunately, we live in a lazy generation, a generation that wants to, they'll go to Google, they'll go other places to find quick answers. Quick answers can be good in some instance, but the answers that you've had to spend time and labor and prayer and seek in his face, those are the ones that tend to stick with you. You know, there are some lessons that I have some life lessons where the father's had me in cycle of seasons for a long period of time. And and that can that could be spiritually, financially. Um, relationship wise different cycles you can be in whatever cycle you're in right now just like the feast days you have to make the most of what he's teaching you what he's showing you what he's revealing to you so when you go into the next cycle or the next seasons you can go in with strength but what usually happens for most people, they don't go in with strength. They complain through the whole season. They talk about how the enemy's fighting them and how the enemy's against them. And, you know, everything is about what the enemy's doing. And they fail to realize, just like in the story of Job or Job. Nothing happens by chance. It goes, it has to go through his permission. So if he's let this come upon you, take the opportunity to focus and see what he's trying to do in your life. What is he trying to perfect in you? What are you hiding? Because you know, usually when a person is hurt somewhere, they'll favor that hurt and protect that hurt because if somebody touches it, it makes it hurt. But sometimes the only way to get something better is to touch it so that it can be healed and healed properly. So I encourage you, no matter where you are in your walk, whether you're in the beginning, the middle, you know, whether you consider yourself advanced in the faith, 
Never lose track of where you are in the journey. Let him continue to mold and make you and shape you. Doesn't matter. You could be a moray. You could be a teacher. You could just be a student. Make the most out of what he's doing in your life. Because when he stops doing, what does that mean? But if, if he's still doing things in your life, you know, you're still going through things. It's an opportunity for his esteem to be shown in you. So I just encourage you to um, tune back in next week. We'll be at this time, 1 p.m. I, th I think that'll be, the, we'll test it out. Uh, the time could fluctuate, but I really doubt if it does. Um, but we'll be on the live stream at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll be ready to rock and roll, get this thing going. I'm looking forward to an excellent year. Looking forward to the Father opening more doors bringing more people in, showing more people the truth of his word, and more people finding his word and accepting it and pursuing it. And those that need help reaching out and saying, hey, hey, look, I need help. You know, all of us had to reach out at some point. Don't be so proud that you drowning and you can't say, throw me a lifeline. But if you're going to be thrown a lifeline, you got to make sure you grab it and use it. All right, Ms. Bacar, I'm glad to see you all on. It has been a great little 20 minutes. And you even got a, a we call it a mini lesson. <laughs> So make sure you, if you haven't, uh, check out the website, www.mylivingbranch.org. Um, sometimes I post questions on there. If you want to respond, you can respond to them. Sometimes your response could help others. And remember that um, his esteem is what's at the forefront, bringing esteem to his name. All right, Ms. Bacar, this is Moray Madan Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom. And let's make this the best Shabbat ever. Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bacar.